materials needed to begin the hard slab method are canvas board with slats, rolling pin, triangle, templates, if desired, a textured plate, clay supply, and pen tool. Use the same rolling technique you used for the soft slab method. You will need long enough or enough slabs to cut six walls for a box. Sometimes clay will have to be cut and fitted into gaps to accommodate templates. Smooth in joined seams on both the front and back sides of the slab. Do not trace cut the template, but cut away excess clay. Pre-powder your texture plate. Press firmly with your hands before rolling on with a rolling pin. If you have enough slab left for another wall, repeat the process. Make sure you know how many templates you can fit on one slab before cutting. Templates should fit flush against each other to make the most use of the slab. If you need a stronger cutting guide, match the 90 degree corner of the triangle with your template and cut against the plastic of the triangle. If you prefer to cut against the template rather than the triangle, make sure that you hold down the side you are cutting firmly against the clay. When you're finished cutting, pull away the excess clay and repeat for the other three walls. Wall slabs must be leather hard before mitering. Place two bags on each end of your tray. Walls that do not fit on the tray can be placed on top other slabs. Put the largest slabs on the tray first. Do not spray with water. Overlap the bags and then store for the next day. To bevel the edges, you will need a tile, miter, and pen tool. Make sure you bevel all walls with the interior up and the textured side down. Mitering bevels the wall edges into 45 degree angles so they will fit against each other to create 90 degree angles necessary to form a box. This is the side view of what beveling looks like when you slice against the edge of a wall. For long sides, you may choose to brace the wall with a tile. Allow enough room for your thumb to catch the wire of the miter. Hold the miter in place flush against the table with the wire position to slice through the wall edge. Move smoothly down, keeping the miter flush against the table until the wire comes in contact with your thumb. Do not use the tile to brace a beveled edge as it would distort it. Brace it with your hand and thumb.
If you plan to use a basic lid with just beveled edges instead of a puzzle lid, you will score all edges except the lid and the edges that come into contact with the lid, as seen here on this tray. Use wood blocks to support your walls while constructing and build over newspaper in order to prevent sticking and to rotate the box. No matter the finished orientation of the box, begin construction with a large wall down against the tray. If you plan to cut a puzzle lid, every side must be scored. Apply slip to one of each joining side only when you are ready to join them. Make sure all sides are fitted flush and firmly. Then use the point of a carving tool to clean and seam the inside joints. Pinch the outside joints firmly, then smooth over with your finger. If excess slip is a problem, mop it away with a dry sponge. Add the top side last and repeat the process of joining seams and smoothing over. Plan on paper to create another template to trace on the box before cutting the puzzle lid. Cut in multiple layers to prevent the box from getting distorted. After the final cut, clear away clay debris with your finger. Smooth all edges with a dry sponge. Be careful to maintain a good fit between the lid and the bottom of the box. Handles, knobs, or feet should be pre-made and leather hard before joining. Measure for the position, use a pen tool to trace the scoring area, score the addition, add slip to the scored area on the lid, join firmly, and clean away excess slip.